What's up guys, Donovan Wagner here. Recently someone had asked me to make a video on my automotive roller shots. These are super popular and it's for a reason. These shots are epic when you nail them. And I'm gonna show you guys how you can get some awesome ones this summer, so stick around. So I've been shooting rollers for years now. Started out in Red Deer, Alberta, which is a pretty boring city. So there's not much else to shoot other than cars. So I've kind of learned some things over the years and where I've progressed to now with my automotive photography is up here, where as opposed to before, I was about here. So I'm gonna help you guys get from here to here relatively quick and easy. When it comes to roller shots, there's basically four principles you need to think about beforehand. And once you got those four things down, you've pretty much got a recipe for success. And here they are. Number one, your shutter speed. I know it makes sense when you think motion blur to slow your shutter speed right down. And that is in fact correct. My magic number for that is about one over 30 is what I've found to work very good and have a high success rate. Feel free to experiment with other shutter speeds, slower, faster. You'll see what it does to the road and the tires. And like I said, one over 30 has just kind of been that sweet spot for me. Number two, how you're going to achieve the rolling shots. So there's a few different ways of getting these kind of motion blur photos of cars. One is just simply standing on the ground and panning with the car as it goes by. Now this is, not ideal, but in most cases, if you're at a car show or a race or something, that's likely how you're gonna have to try to get these. Um, it's a little bit harder to do and takes a lot of practice, but you can still get really good results from doing this. The second method would be to have a second car going the same speed as your subject car and shooting out of a window or hatch or whatever you guys wanna do. I'm not gonna talk laws here and seatbelt rules and all that, that's up to you. But camera car, subject car, going the same speed is typically what I do, and it works great. The third method I have seen people use is using a rig, which is having a pole with a camera on the end of it suction cupped to your subject car so that your camera and the car are going the exact same speed the entire time, and you just remote trigger it from inside the car. This is kind of a guaranteed fail-safe way of getting those clean rollers. And in fact, you'll probably see a lot of people use this technique. It just requires minor Photoshopping after to basically mask out the pole. Other than that, you're gonna have a nice clean, sharp image. Once you've figured out how you're gonna go about taking the photos, third thing you need to think about is angle. Like I've said in previous automotive videos, there are different angles you can take photos of cars and some are more interesting than others and some are preferred. So my favorite, again, is shooting nice and low to the ground. So however you're gonna go about doing that, back to number two, that's up to you. But if you're nice and low to the ground, it allows more of the road and motion blur and wheels and it makes the car fill up more of the frame and look more impressive. Whereas if you're shooting just eye height or something, it's basically not as interesting because it's what everyone else would see typically. My most common angle for the subject car is almost a front three quarter, so side and front. Um, so subject car here, I would be in the left lane slightly ahead of it. Uh, again, that's just personal preference. I find most cars have the most nice, unique lines on those sides of the car. But again, that's entirely up to you and creative preference. Number four, the final thing I always think about is the background. We get caught up in perfecting, oh, that's a sharp photo of the car. And then you get into Lightroom after and you're like, crap. There is a bunch of garbage bins and power lines and other things in the background of this photo that take away from it and it, you just feel robbed. So think about where you're shooting these roller shots before you go through this hassle. So if you can find a road that doesn't have, you know, an ugly barricade beside it or power lines or people have their garbage bins out on garbage day, these are all things you can think about ahead of time. It'll save you so much effort in post and it'll just help the overall look of the image that much more.
Anyways, guys, hope this helps you guys. Thank you so much for the question. If you guys have any more automotive photography questions or any kind of photography questions, let me know in the comments below. I would also love to see your guys' automotive work. So post your links in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out. Thank you so much for watching.